I'm back. Actually, I'm just back from a guitar show in England. That's the way life is. It's terribly hard. <laughs> but anyway, here I am. And uh, when I was on my way there, on my way there, you can speak English if you want. This is a sort of twisted sort of dialect. Anyway, while I was on my way there, the mate of mine, he said, is he going to top up with diesel on the way? So I did. <laughs> and here it is, diesel. Now if you live in America, diesel isn't so expensive. But here in England, it costs more than a pint of blood. <laughs> it's our government, you know. Anyway, on to the diesel. Of course, he didn't mean the diesel we put in the tank. He meant this diesel. And the thing is, I hate to say it, this diesel costs you more in America than it does in England. Rock and roll. And so it should. It's about time you guys got your money out. <laughs> now this one, this is called a diesel Hagen, or Hagen, or Hagen even. It's one of them three. <laughs> don't worry if you don't say it right. Who is going to tell you off? Nobody, not even me. What do I care what it's called? It's called a diesel. The rest doesn't matter. Well, we'll get to that. There's no doubt about it. Now, I went and picked this up from my friendly diesel variant, Diesel Go UK. Hi, James. Yeah, it's me. But I bought it actually from a guy that was selling it. He had two. And James was kind enough to drop it off for me. Which I thought was very nice because it's a bit heavy, but we'll come to that later. You could say it's heavy metal, <laughs> but actually, is it heavy metal? Is this amp one of those amps that you think, oh, it's for the shredder guys? You know, you couldn't use one of these as an ordinary amp. And that's what puts people off. A lot of this style of amp, like maybe an E670 or uh, an angle, or a a diesel Hagen, I'm going to call it. You can call me what you like. Or, you, you know the name, the list of amps is as long as you're on. And they're all used by metalers, or metal guys. Well, I'm here to set the record straight today. I think we can use this for anything. Almost. <laughs> now this Hagen thing, or whatever you want to call it, this diesel, this model's been out for about two years in Germany. Uh, maybe a bit less in your country or even in England but uh, it's about two years old hey Tony why aren't you buying a new one well I'm not buying a new one because this one's cheaper and it's the same thing well that makes sense doesn't it so I decided to go down this route as you can see this was a sort of standby amp and the guy never used it well that's what he said we'll soon find out <laughs> won't we well what we're gonna do is we Oh my god, it's there again. Well, it's getting commonplace these days. Every time I put an amp out in here, it's on the top, ready to go. Well, what we're going to do this time is we're going to do uh, inside and out again. I love doing inside and out of amps because then you really get to see what you're buying. And I think this one, being German made, it's a bit like an Audi. <sighs> or it should be. And, uh, you know, German products are, are, are notorious for being well engineered. But Germans are great at engineering. Look at Messerschmitt. You don't want to see one of them close. But anyway, the point is, they're good for engineering. And Diesel is a German company. Registered trademark indeed. So, if the lid's coming off, we're going to look inside, then we're going to look outside, and then I actually went onto the Diesel stand and got a guy well, actually, James of Diesel went and found somebody, just wandering around, I think he was. He'd had a go earlier, and James grabbed him and brought him back. And said, here, play in front of this camera. And that's what's at the end of this video. But I'm going to also play at the end of the video. Not quite as good as he was, but the idea is that you can have a guitarist like that, or you can have a guitarist like this. <laughs> and I'm not really very good, but the point is, I'm probably like you. 
and the rest of them, well, they're mega gods, aren't they? They play every night. But don't worry about that either. Uh, you can own one of these without being a mega god. And uh, nobody's put me up to showing you this either, by the way. I went out and bought this with cash. Well, nearly cash, credit card. <laughs> so let's take a look inside. Let's see what the diesel's really made of. Bear in mind this one's about nine months old. Whoa, hold on. Let me get the chassis out. It's out. It's heavy. Part of what makes it heavy are the big fat transformers. Listen, you always see them on a really great amp. Sometimes not so great, but this one looks uh, up to now pretty great. These, uh, these transformers weigh a ton. But thankfully, the way they've milk built the chassis, it's got like a sunken in end point. You can pick the whole thing up and move it around. It's really nice. That's the first thing I like about it. Easy to move around, especially when it's out of the chassis. Some of these other ones, oh man. Anyway, let's take a little closer look at uh, what's in there. Well, first things first. It's TAD 7025WA high grade. Tubank Doctor, fancy that, a standard. At least it should be standard. If he's never used it, we'll find out. Let's check the rest. Number two is the Ruby Tube. Really? Well, there he is, 12AX7 AC5 HG+. Plus. Let's carry on, Let's see what else we've got in here. And the plot thickens. Number three along the row is uh, 12AX7B China. We'll see. Number four is China too. 12AX7B China. Number five in the row is China. We've only got this other one here which is probably used for other things but uh, we'll check that one now. And you guessed it, the last one's a 12AX7B China. <laughs> Let's check the other tubes out eh? Yeah, the power tubes. They're ruby tubes. KT77 so they'll probably have that bit more bottom end than uh, EL34s and the like, although they are similar, you can't just switch them because the, uh, the resistors inside are a different, uh, usual different uh, uh, measurement. Stop some getting blown up, I suppose. Let's flip it over. Well, I'll tell you what, before we flip it over, let's talk about those uh, transformers a bit. I noticed that uh, it's got a real choke. <coughs> I like real chokes because uh, they're better than just having some resistor inside uh, like some of the Marshalls have and uh, I fitted chokes to some Marshalls that had just uh, resistors like the old uh, JBM not JBM yeah JBM 410H the old one not the, not the Satch one and uh, it made a bit of difference but not that much but you can hear the difference I guess now this transformer over here this big one this is a power transformer. We'll have a look inside, see what it does later, but uh, honestly, it's really well made. But it's a no name. Maybe uh, Diesel have them made themselves, or maybe they make them themselves, probably they get them made. But it's a no name. And um, funnily enough, so is the output transformer. It's all no name. It probably is custom made for Diesel. Yeah. Let's take a look underneath where it matters. Well, just flipping it over, uh, you can see straight away that uh, this particular amp is uh, extremely well made actually. Uh, it reminds me a lot uh, in its build and the quality that is of uh, Mesa Boogie. If you look down here, you'll see, you see the front amp, it's the back of the amp. But you see all these little jumpers onto individual pots not stuck on the motherboard in some way they're all separate you can all take them off get replacements and screw them in I dare say you could even get standard replacements for those and just screw them straight in should you get any major problem with any of that it's the same with these switches they sort of make or break and press it and press it there we are more nice some more down here it's all great 
and working at it. Uh, I'm going to get in a bit closer and show you. But uh, you've got the main board here, and you've got this uh, this outer board for looks to me like a uh, parallel serial switching loop uh, tuner compensated out foot switch Hagen or Hagen, whatever you want to call it. There. So there's your little I/O I/O board for the loops and things, and then it all shoots down onto the motherboard. The main tubes are down under there. Anyway, let's go and have a little closer look at it and then maybe you can appreciate the sort of quality that's inside this thing as I can sitting here and uh, it's all very interesting stuff really. You do want to know what you're buying don't you? You don't want some piece of rubbish inside your arm, do you? Well if you do, don't buy one of these. <laughs> And it's pretty much the same with Mesa Boogie. Don't buy it. If you don't want it, don't buy it. Go and buy the cheap, you know, stuff. Anyway, let's zoom in close for an up close and personal view. Here we go. I can't wait. Well, here we are inside. Let me come around this side. Uh, front of the amp. Back of the amp. Power in. Comes in up here and uh, speaker out is over that side of course in between that you've got the power section looks like a bit of a control section there for this board uh, you've got the main bit of the amp with the preamp sockets there you can see them and then you've got this uh, this output section over here and of course all the very nicely laid out wires uh, that form part of the amp. You can see straight off that it's a very clean amp and very well made, very well put together indeed. Uh, even looking at the case, there's no shortcuts with this case anywhere actually. I mean it's, it's, it's built like a, a toilet <laughs> or a bathroom as they might say in the States. So looking at it from this end we've got this power transformer here, you've got uh, this little bit here, these are the on and offs and standbys, if you can see that. And it sort of goes out that side, comes back in this side, and you've got another bio stuff. Plant. One thing I did notice is a little spare wire down here, which might help you or might not help you. I haven't looked at the wiring, so I'm not really going to be able to confidently tell you anything except to say there's a spare wire there which might help you changing it to other voltages this one happens to be a 230 volt head number 217 so I guess it's number 217 it could be series 2 number 17 who knows they don't tell you do they not to worry so you've got all this uh, sort of rectification as well down this area and I do notice if you know notice up there this bit here, T1 and T4 and T2 and T3, that looks to me like the uh, biasing. Because you've got a bias light, they're just down there. Bias 1 and bias 2 when they go up to them. So I suspect the biasing's all done there. And nicely enough, uh, Mr. Diesel included all the instructions on the board. At least I think that's what they are, I haven't looked close yet, but uh, instructions on the board, how to, you know, bias the amp, very nice, but don't try it if you've never done it before and don't take the lid off and go and touch these things down here because you will light up, no doubt, no ifs, no buts, no ahs. Moving along a bit, like I said we've got the central board, a uh, separate board than the, the main board and there's no tubes on this, this is just a, an I.O. board, but like I said, for the parallel loop, the serial loop, the switchable loop uh, you've got a tuner out, compensated out, and a foot switch in. So that covers really that board. Once again, nice and simple. Look at the wiring, how neat and nice it is. And this one was built by what looks like somebody named Sana. Something like that. They signed the board right there and date it. I've got a close up of that, uh, then I might just bling into the video. Who knows? Moving along, like I said, you're going more that way now, but under there, up there, 
or power tubes and like I said they are KT77 JJ's and these one are all rated at 54 milliamps so and they're all match the same but there is one there that's the back end of one of the tubes one of the power tubes that is and it says PT1 probably power tube one and there's its little resistor it's soldered straight to the board uh, is the socket but of course heat rises so I guess like most of the other things that go on these days with plugging in of uh, tubes or valves they all mount them on the PCB it just seems to be a statement of fact these days very few that I come across well I haven't come across any of late that aren't old amps uh, that don't mount in this way whether it's Chinese, German, American you name it they all do the same thing anyway looking down at this section of the amp uh, most of it's pretty nice looks pretty nice that little bit doesn't look so pretty nice looks like that's had a bit of something done on it no, look. Oh, it's, it's had a modification uh, that's, that's to me is a production mod and what they've done is they've taken this uh, what looks like a capacitor and added a little resistor to one of the legs there's nothing new about that that's very common uh, throughout PCB manufacture you know you, you, you get a revision and then find that you need to do a little mod and there's one of them straight from well really straight from the factory as far as I'm aware this, this amp hasn't been touched by anybody except when it came from diesel so being used three or four times and eight or nine months old I probably believe that actually it's got the correct dates and things on it so all very nice really uh, like I say not much more else to talk about I'm not going to spend all day on this you've got a little relays as well though see on there all these little relays I'm sure they're to do with the switching let's not worry about it I just wanted to show you inside and uh, see that fine quality German quality that there is inside this machine you can see that it's been put together with love and care that's what I'd say and if you were to ask Mr. Diesel himself I'm sure he'd agree let's flip it over to the top I've done it again haven't I just before I really go back to the top I just wanted to show you the uh, soldering or soldering as they say in America for the uh, for the power tube and its resistor there it is and that little mod is a little bit further over down here right there you can see that they've got a little resistor to the leg this is what you see from the top big fat input transformer like I said it actually goes off camera <laughs> it's that big and fat and there's the uh, output transformer there that's also big and fat but not as big as fat as the input one so there there's a uh, choke hiding just around the side here you're not missing much it's in a plastic cover it doesn't mean much really but, uh, there's your KT77s yeah not unlike the spawn amp uh, that used to have a PCB manufacturer too uh, none of this uh, you know, point to point stuff I think uh, they're still out there of course but well this is the way they're made today and of course you've got Coming back here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, and a separate one there, making six uh, preamp tubes. One will be used for something else, no doubt. Maybe two on, probably one on this amp. And you've got your I/O. And nicely enough, this one's got MIDI, so maybe that was what the uh, the big chip was used for. Probably. Let's swipe it round to the front. And just so you get a bit of a better view of the uh, the amp on the outside, here it is. All them little tubes, the big fat ones for the power, KT77 like I said, and all your control knobs and switches across the front. Okay, I'm going to go and put it back in its case because it takes me a little while to do that because it's very heavy. And then we'll, uh, we'll meet up at the top. What do you say to that? Hold on. They get harder, trust me. I'm back. Here it is. Cleaned up. I got rid of the dirt. Polished. All the knobs look really nice. 
there's only a few things left to do. I could whip through all the front of these things. I'm not going to, but I'm just going to talk about them a little bit rather than cameraing into, you know what a Boeing knob looks like. What you got on this amp? It's channel one of the top row. Channel two is the second row. It's not too difficult to guess what's next. Channel three is the third row. And channel four is this bottom row. How was easy, wasn't it? They look all complex, but in reality, even I can use one. <laughs> but as well as that, you've got, uh, you've got a few other little bits and pieces down here. You've got a manual switch between one, two, three, and four. That's what you want to do. And notice they just sort of flick switches. They don't stay down, they just flick. So it's probably all controlled by that big chip we were looking at. Probably. And you've got the same here. Uh, this says master to loop, mute, and store. Because don't forget it's MIDI controlled. That's something I like. So you can control this amp uh, from, from your, you know, your ground control or your your MIDI Raider or whatever you want. You can even buy the diesel one if you want to be... It's pricey. Well, what's left? I could harp on about a thousand things really. But, for the most part, this amp reminds me of a couple of other amps. It's a bit weird. It doesn't look the same, but it just reminds me of the same sort of vibe. Uh, for example, uh, Spawn Nitro. Spawn Nitro was a, a really good amp, but to be honest, uh, in my opinion, it was more of a really a one sound amp. You know, it was in your face 100% of the time. Now, I don't know what this one will be like, so I'll get it outside and have a look. But the other amp that it reminds me of is a Mace Boogie, and that isn't particularly because it's got KT77s, because Mesa don't typically have them. Or anything like that, it's just more the build quality. The build quality on this amp is really uh, nice and uh, if you noticed on the back, I might slip this in here, but if, you, if I don't, don't worry. This is made by Lars, L-A-R-S. Hi Lars. And he's got a little smiley face. So that other person might have been the person that put the board together and then Lars did the finishing off, I guess. All very nice, all good. And they do guarantee these amps five years which is also quite nice well let's get up to a bit of speed on warranty I'm always for warranty as much warranty as I can get and I could have gone uh, instead of buying the second user one I could have gone along to Toman or Thoman depending on how you pronounce it and I could have bought one off there or then I could, again I could have bought one from James over here in England well if I was going to buy a new one, I hate to say it, but I'd be buying it from James. And the reason is very simple. If you go to Toman, or Thoman, well, pronounce it how you will, they'll give you a three year warranty on nearly everything you buy. The only problem is, this app comes with a five year warranty, and I haven't seen anywhere where Toman tell you they're going to give you five years. They give you three years, or they give you three years. So. It's not any cheaper, particularly, than uh, buying from James in the UK, if you're in the UK. And I suspect there'll be some similar things with diesel over in the States. You know, you'll get these people that offer you two or three years warranty, when in fact, diesel has five years, unless the distributor for that country decides that he isn't going to give you what diesel give you. I don't know. You need to take that up with him. Well, for me, I think warranty is always a very important thing, especially if you're spending a lot of money. This this particular amp, don't quote me if I'm wrong, should I say, uh, I think they're about £2,100 or £2,200. That's about $3,000 equivalent. So it's not really a cheap amp. Uh, I got this one cheaper for about $2,100 or equivalent, something, something near that. So. There's a saving to be had if you can get a second hand one. If you do buy the new one, uh, it makes no difference, but except for that warranty really. These are really well made amps and it should last you, literally, a lifetime. If this is what you want, and that's where you come back to the playing side. Now when I met James earlier today, I'd never met the guy before in my life. I have no association with this company whatsoever, except that I bought one of these 
and I went over to find out about the warranty which is always uppermost in my mind on an amp that I'm probably going to keep or maybe going to keep I may not I might not like it who knows then I'll be speaking to James I guess but in any case it makes little difference the fact is that uh, you've got a five year warranty and James is a very likeable guy in the UK Toman on the other hand you're just another you're just another customer and they've got loads of them so my choice would have been James for a new one and that's not often that I choose a UK company uh, when I can get it uh, cheaper elsewhere without affecting the warranty and I know on some of the H&K and some of the other amps that, that I've reviewed over time uh, often they're far cheaper in Europe than they are in the UK well, that's not the case with this one and uh, I'm quite about that because uh, I hate to see those variables that are ginormous uh, for ordinary guys like uh, me and you because uh, we have to pay the extra uh, but in this case anyway like I said I'm more happy to get it from James because James will give me a five year warranty and Toman will probably give me three yeah I got his card off the stand uh, diesel.co.uk D-I-E-Z-E-L and his name James Leader a likeable guy he's been around a long time looks to me like a real heavy metal but <laughs> you don't have to be one of them I think that I can make this work how I want it not how heavy metal is wanting if you know what I mean so maybe it's more of an all round them than uh, you might think we shall see later on anyway now lastly uh, it's going to be played next and it's going to be played by I just thought I'd give him a bit of a plug because he sat down and played it for me while I've got the camera it's better play than me this is a guy named Chris Byrne B-Y-R-N-E of a band called Farman, Farman F-A-H-R-A-N and his website is fahran.com. Chris, thanks for playing it, man. I needed somebody like you. <laughs> I don't come anywhere near that point. Well done, dude. Uh, all seemed good. So there's Chris's plug. And after Chris, with all his fabulous playing, will be me. <laughs> I don't have any fabulous playing. But what I do have is... Uh, probably a similar ability to you maybe better maybe worse doesn't really matter I'm just the ordinary guy remember the ordinary guy best way to be you don't meet some metal god don't need to be one of them uh, anyway what you'll get is Chris <clears throat> who's very good and then you'll get me playing I don't know what I'll play I'll play something on it uh, so you get two views the more rockier and the more rockier <laughs> Anyway, don't forget to visit the website www.tonymackenzie.com I'm going to do a write-up on this one, without a question. Uh, I'm going to do that. Jimmy it doesn't blow up before I put it in, but it won't. And uh, you can get a full written review, which is far more information on it, far more pictures and things than, than, than anything you'll see in this video. But that is the diesel Hagen, or Hagen, or call it what you will, you know which one I mean. I'm going to love playing with these knobs. I'll be setting a bit of MIDI up on it too. Because uh, I like changing channels that way. Enjoy. It's coming up now. Rock and roll. Boys, 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 this weekend. Okay, this is James from uh, Easy Arms UK. What's your name? Uh, Chris. And this is Chris on the guitar. 